let's go on to El Salvador and talk about the bond. This is a pretty interesting conversation because of where El Salvador sat within the conversation of uh, Bitcoin over the last two years. When we saw Nayib Bukele, who is the president of El Salvador, get into the Bitcoin space, that Bitcoin Miami uh, announcement. That was huge news. And that really set off the Bitcoin bull run in a lot of ways, like this nation state ad- adoption. And I saw it turn a lot of heads, including people who were very against Bitcoin, uh, people who were you know, more ETH heads, I, I should say. They're kind of turned off from Bitcoin. And this turned a lot of people who were also liking to TradFi into Bitcoin as well. They started taking it seriously. But now we have the opposite story right where bitcoin is down like 60 percent from all-time highs 70 percent from all-time highs and el salvador is facing some credit rating issues fitch which is a credit rating industry or uh, issuer has downgraded el salvador's credit rating once again from ccc to cc and this follows a further credit rating change in february from b minus to ccc so credit ratings are really important for a, firm, for a country like El Salvador, which is trying to use a lot of funds from the IMF or other larger bank bodies, uh, use those funds to help fund infrastructure within the country, build up the country, use it for humanitarian reasons. And we often see that these packages are used uh, to sort of steer policy. And Nayib Bekele has been actually very vocal against anyone trying to steer his country's future. And that's why he's latched onto Bitcoin. So we have a very dynamic conversation here where Nayib Bekele is a fan of Bitcoin and not a fan of what he has basically labeled as imperialist banking policies. But on the flip side, the country also needs this, right? They need some sort of funding uh, to fund infrastructure within the country, humanitarian reasons, uh, et cetera. I'll throw it over to you, though, Jen, and get your take on this one. Well, there's no one else to throw it to. So here we go. <laughs> so, you, you know, It's been so interesting watching what's been going on in El Salvador over the past year. And we've really seen President Nayib Bukele come up against, um, you know, like the IMF, for example. And so it will be interesting to see how how they come out of this. There was an article published yesterday by David Morris. I wish he was here today called The Good, the Bad and the Ugly, looking, looking at El Salvador over the past year. And in his article, he found that, you know, while Bitcoin hasn't been able to shield El Salvador from, uh, he said, entanglements with the dollar, um, and while the initiative lost trust in the beginning because a lot of the technical blunders, that things are getting better and you know remittance usage and tour- tourism numbers are up. There was an interesting uh, piece of information in his article. He said, if Salvador adoption of Bitcoin remittances accelerates at another 2% per year, the $100 million spent on the Bitcoin network infrastructure could pay for itself in less than a decade. And so we've had this push and pull with the, with the El Salvador story over the last year. Like There are certain things that are really great about it for the country, and there are certain things that are really bad in the short term. And so I, I wonder what's going to happen next there, and I especially wonder what's going to happen next because they have an election coming up in 2024. And should someone who is not Nayib Bukele, who is the president of El Salvador, come into power, what will happen to the economy? I don't know. What will happen to their Bitcoin? Are they going to liquidate the Bitcoin? Yeah, what will not. happen? What if, I really hope what not What if the too. new president came in and they just sold all the Bitcoin immediately? That would be sort of a <laughs> that bummer. Would uh, be a big bummer. No, you're right. We're, We have like a new presidential election coming up. I mean, still like 18 months away, but this does sort of set up some questions, right? Like what is the policy El Salvador is going to follow going forward? And can Bukele uh, increase his popularity over this time to maintain his position within the country? Like for the most part, we've seen pretty positive news, right? But we also live within the Bitcoin space where like everything about Bukele has basically been very positive. But there's some real negatives as well to talk about. A lot of people see him as an authoritarian as a quasi-dictator, maybe even just to throw that word out there. That's been tossed around within some mainstream media headlines due to his uh, involvement within national security and dealing with gangs within the country. And just because he has Bitcoin on the balance sheet doesn't necessarily mm-hmm. mean that he is the right leader for this country. And then you also get into some questions about like these loans that are outstanding and the possible restructuring and debt restructuring for them. These are really complicated things. Like There's a lot of people that El Salvador owes money to And just because you're tweeting about Bitcoin doesn't mean that you have the answers to all these. I mean, I certainly hope they have answers to these problems in the near term because they seem very significant. But we don't know if Bitcoin's going to fit within that. 
Um, to me, the last question I actually want to throw over to you, Jen, is like, what does this do to the Bitcoin space if one, he loses re-election or two, have to sell their Bitcoin because they can't get funding otherwise? I don't know if it, it does much to the Bitcoin space here. I think the momentum still carries on. I think if they have to sell their Bitcoin, that's a whole different story. He seems to be a very... At, at times, emotionally driven. You know, I remember when there was pushback against the Bitcoin law, he kind of took to Twitter and was like, fine, if you don't want to participate in Bitcoin, that's fine, do whatever you want. And actually, what you interpret from the law is actually different. But you re we remember the text of that law wasn't changed. And so I think... I think it's worse for the country than it is for the Bitcoin space. I think the Bitcoin space is continue, going to continue to truck along, but El Salvador might find themselves in a really dire situation. I think this is a big bet that the president has made on, on Bitcoin. And now that now we're seeing with the credit rating that in the short term, uh, they're going to come up against some battles that I don't know how prepared they are to fight. I'll give you the last word before we move on to the next one. Yeah, I hope uh, Bukele doesn't see us on Twitter and ratio both of us because that would be devastating for yeah. both our egos. But I, I do think it's we true. have a similar take, right? Like this could be a tough situation for them. And for the Bitcoin community, I think this could also be pretty tough because like, what happens if basically the leader of your movement suffers such a large loss like this? Like Michael Saylor has obviously been in the headlines a lot as well right now, right? And it's not been for very positive things. I mean, they did buy a lot more Bitcoin the other day, which actually happened on the day of the merge, which I thought was a little comical or maybe like some good timing there. But they made a lot of losses on that, those huge Bitcoin purchases. And I think they bought into that super cycle thesis. It didn't pan out. And now you're sitting on a bunch of losses and having bought so much. I think they're taking a bunch of impairments on top of it. So yes, it's tough. Uh, and I, I think that there's going to be some like soul seeking a little bit or soul searching during the bear market.